All right. Hey, so I'm Katrina. I'm here to talk about code generation. And I call this talk Code Generation Go Secret Weapon because I think this is a really great and powerful technique. But it's one that I think is underutilized because it's a little bit tricky to get started with. And so my, go my co co goal for this talk um, is to leave you guys with, one, an awareness that this exists, and two, some building blocks that you can use when you go on your own code generation adventures. So accordingly, all the code from here is on GitHub. You can find it after the talk. A little bit about me, my name is Katrina. I'm a software engineer on the compute team at DigitalOcean. Uh, DigitalOcean is a cloud provider. We heard earlier today that we maybe shouldn't trust cloud providers, but DigitalOcean is specifically focused on uh, improving developer happiness, so <laughs> maybe we're a little less bad than everyone else. Um, and a lot of our infrastructure is written in Go. I specifically want to call your attention to these two open source projects that we have called GoQMU and GoLibvert. These uh, use code generation, and these are great projects that my coworkers wrote that got me interested in talking about co code generation today. They wrap these big, sprawling C APIs with Go code so that you can actually call them from within Go. So if you're interested in code generation production, check these two projects out. They're on GitHub, too. All right, so code generation, what is it? 10,000-foot uh, high-level talk. You have a template, you've got some data, you've got some logic that's gonna mash the template together with the data. You execute from the command line this go generate command, and voila, it produces some output for you. Um, the format of the template is a go text template, which you may be familiar with from other contexts. The format of the data is a go interface, so pretty much anything you can mash into that template. And the format of the logic is go code, so it should look really familiar to you if you've ever written go before. Um, and then the format of the output is anything at all, but we are going to focus today on producing output that is go, so it's actual code that you can run elsewhere in your programs. Um, but before we get started with that, let's do a little bit of a hello world example, um, just because to 10,000 feet, let's go down to nuts and bolts. So here's a file that I'm going to use to generate some code. Um, it's got everything we just talked about. It's got a template. Um, it's got some data. Right now the data is empty because Hello World is the most basic possible example you could write, so we don't actually need any data. Um, and we've got some logic that we're gonna use to plug those two things together. Um, also, I just want to point out a little bit about the format of this file. Um, this is a regular Go file. I've called it gen.go. You can call it anything you want. Um, and like other Go files, I've uh, written that this is in package main and it's got a main function, but we're not going to run it the same way you normally run code that's in package main. Instead, I've added this tag, go generate, and this is going to tell the Go, go tool, hey, when we call it go generate, we want you to run go run gen.go, and that's what's going to call all this code. So if we do that, then we'll produce some output file, hello world. Great. The output file is called output.txt because that's the name that I put in the code generator. All right, that was like what it actually does, but why would you ever want to use this? Um, anytime you're copying and pasting a lot, like if you've got all that boilerplate code and you're like, okay, I've got this line, oh, let me just like change a couple letters, let me copy and paste it, change a couple letters again, that's a time when you might want to use code generation, um, especially if you anticipate that changing in the future and you really don't want to be that person who has to maintain this code by going in and like changing a couple of letters and copying and pasting a bunch of lines uh, in the future. Um, I personally think that the killer app is generating API clients and wrappers uh, like we've done with GoQMU and GoLibvert, but it's also useful for other tasks like um, we were talking about en enumerated constants in the past. That's something that uh, we've used code generation for before so that you don't have to type all that out. All right, so accordingly, my next example is going to be about auto-detecting JSON schemas from APIs that we consume. So here's the scenario. We've got some sort of REST API. Here in my example, I've taken this example from Instagram. We've got a user response. Uh, they were super creative, so I just left their uh, field names in there. Um, I've made a couple of modifications to this resp response. The most significant one is I took out anything nested because this is the five minute talk and not the 45 minute talk. And if you want to talk about nesting, it gets a lot more complicated. Um, but this will do for us. So we want to take this JSON, we want to unmarshal it into a struct. That way we can do something with it in our Go code. And that looks something like this. We want to have some kind of, oh goodness. Oh, we don't have any highlighting. Oh, it's, oh you guys can see it, but I can't. Great, okay, cool. So we have some kind of user type. <laughs> We want to unmarshal that data into the user type, and then we want to do stuff with this user. And so if we want to do this, we need a type that looks something like this that has all of those JSON fields um, it translated into Go. And so this is the type of thing that's like a little bit annoying, might be doing a lot of copying and pasting from JSON. Um, and so we said, can we generate this type? And of course, it's a conference talk, so the answer is yes. Um, 
And I'm gonna give you a caveat though, especially a modified version. We're gonna make it a little bit simpler uh, just to make our lives easier. We're, one, we're going to uh, reorder the fields so that they're just in alphabetical order. That's easier for our generator. Um, we're also gonna use these ugly field names where it's like sort of snake case. Um, normally you would never do this in Go. You'd use camel casing in Go code. Um, but because it's generated code, like normally you let things slide a little bit. And if you really care a whole lot, um, hey, you can write a snake case to camel case function and then you can pass it to your template and I'll show that how to do that next. All right, so here's the template. Uh, it's a little bit more complicated than the hello world one, so I've put it in its own file, template.tpl. Um, I've also added this little disclaimer, hey, this code was generated by GoGenerate, Don't, do not edit it by hand. This will uh, prevent any hapless developers after you from accidentally editing it and then having other changes uh, gotten rid of next time GoGenerate runs. Um, GoGenerate does not give you this automatically. You've got to add something like this yourself. Um, and we need to pass this template some information. Um, one, we need to give it some data. In particular, we need to give it the name that we're gonna call this struct. In this case, it's gonna be user because we're generating a user's type. Um, we also need to give it the fields that are going to be in this struct. Um, and so this is, uh, this is going to be the map of the JSON names and the values from that original JSON file. We're gonna take that and we're gonna spit out uh, things that look like you know, ID, string, uh, username, string, et cetera. Um, in order to do that, we have some functions title, which is going to title case, aka capitalize the first letter, letter of things, because um, if we're using a struct that, to unmarshal JSON, if we're using a struct to unmarshal data, JSON, the uh, fields all have to be exported, otherwise the JSON unmarshaler can't find it. Um, we're going to also have a type of function that's going to go from a value to a type. So this is going from like one, two, three, four, five to uh, an integer, or in this case, a string, because that's what the API is using. Um, all right, so here's the code that actually injects stuff into this file, um, or into that template. Um, here's the place where we define the template. We load template.tpl, and we give it this title and type of functions. Um, if you're a purist, we can go out for beer after, and you, we can argue about whether or not I should have functions in my template, but we're being pragmatic here, so we're going to pass those functions along to the template, and we're going to allow them to operate there. Um, we also have the data. In this case, we've got the name, which is user, and we've got all those fields, which is coming from this JSON response. Um, and we have the place where all that data is loaded um, from whatever format that we got it in, in this case JSON, into uh, a kind of generic map so that we can pass it on to the generator code. And finally, we have the place where it all uh, gets gets mashed together and generated. Um, and I've called this file user.gen.go. I usually call outputs of generated code uh, something suffix with .gen.go, just so that it's easier for people to understand that it was generated and not something that they produced themselves. But it runs the same way as a Go file does. All right, so we run go generate, and voila, here's the output. Here's our user struct. Um, it's got all the fields we wanted, it's got the formats we wanted, it's got, uh, it indicates that it maps to those JSON files, or to those JSON fields, excuse me. Um, and we can use it the way that we want it to. We've got some type. Um, in this case, it's called codegen.user because I put the output in a package that I call it codegen. And we can unmarshal JSON into it, and then we can do stuff with it. Like we can print it out, and we can see that the structs have, or the field names in this struct have the exact same field name that I generated. So this was a super basic example, but in summary, you can use code generation to create Go code with Go code. Um, so this is super powerful and cool. Um, this can replace a lot of annoying to maintain that requires a lot of copying and pasting in your code base. All right, that's it. Thanks so much.